observe and see how a church conducts a business meeting. There is today only one item on the agenda, and that is to vote uh, on the uh, elders. Of the session approved. Um, the session has made a motion to approve Dennis Rainwater as a new member of the session, as a new elder. Dennis and his wife Kathy are sitting up front here. So, uh, if you do not already know them, and I would be surprised if you do not already know them, uh, because they are active. Dennis is very helpful in all the things that we do here. And uh, we're excited about the possibility that he would join the session and be a new elder for our church. Uh, so please stay and observe. And if you are a member, we humbly ask you to stay and vote and help us with this congregation meeting. And uh, also, the, uh, the, the, the last announcement that I'll bring this morning is, um, as most, if not all of you know, uh, Ken Sikorsky passed uh, this last uh, Tuesday morning and we are scheduling a funeral service it's in your bulletin and on the calendar for this coming saturday i'm going to ask sue rupert to come up and give us some details for that and as she's coming i want to read from ecclesiastes chapter 7 where it says it is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting for this is the end of all mankind and the living will lay it to heart sorrow is better than laughter for by sadness of face the heart is made glad the heart of the wise is in the house of mourning but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth we're going to come this saturday and this will be in a sense a house of mourning and a house of grieving a house of remembering but a house of joy because we know all that god has done for us and for our brother Ken. so soon you please come give us more details it's really hard to have a lot of other details to share other than it will be at 11 o'clock and there is a catered luncheon afterwards so please feel free to stay for that um peggy really is looking for this to be a celebration of him because we all know him as a very vibrant man and that's how we want to remember him um, in light of that we are post you you should have gotten this bulletin in your bullet in your this flyer in your bulletin you did not so don't look for it we pull it out because we need to change the date because it will conflict with um, ken's memorial service so um Put the date in the back of your head, September 11th, and you'll see the flyer next week. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe it's a little confusing. What is the flyer? Oh, it's the ladies' brunch and stretch thing on the beach that Melissa had announced last week that I'm not going to duplicate. <laughs> so that is now postponed from next Saturday to two weeks following next Saturday. Correct. Right. Okay. All right. I'm going to invite Dennis Rupert to come and give us our call to worship. Will you join me and uh, stand if you pray both? And uh, we're going to do the call to worship. It's in your bulletin right here in this section here. And it's from Romans chapter 11. And I'll begin with the first verse there. Oh, the depth and the riches and the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. For the for from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. Lord, may it be so. May our hearts just rejoice by the power of the Holy Spirit in these wonderful verses, and we worship you as we come in Jesus' name. Amen. together 
seated, church. We have the pastoral prayer now, but I'm going to do things just a little bit differently, if that's okay, because um, Trevor is aware of much more than I am, and you are aware of much more than I am to pray for. Um, we just talked about having clean hands and pure hearts and uh, bowing before the Lord. So I was wondering if perhaps we could uh, pray and you lead out and just in things that are on your heart that you know about, that you're concerned of, um, and that are important for our community. Um, I know the hospital is in kind of desperate situation and we want to be praying for them. We want to be praying for Peggy, of course, for Trevor, Melissa, and the kids and those, and those items. Um, Dennis, you have two names too, we also to pray for. So what I'd like to do is this, if you're willing to kind of get a little out of your comfort zone. Um, if you're able, why don't we kind of turn around and kneel, okay? We don't do a lot of kneeling in uh, Presbyterian circles, but I'd like to push the envelope a little bit, uh, if that's okay. And then you go ahead and lead out, and once you're done praying, I will close. And that'll be our pastoral prayer, okay? Father, I do pray for Peggy um, in the loss of her husband, and um, I just want to thank you for the witness that she's been to me during these during this week since it, he's uh, been gone. Um, having her eye to the to the future and finding times to grieve, and it's just been such a blessing to watch my sister in Christ um, trusting you with this whole process that she's going through. Give her um, peace, give her good rest at night, and may you just guide and direct her path um, in, in your, into your will. Jesus, thank you so much for who you are and who you are to us. Amen. Dear Father in heaven, I thank you for having been a few this morning. It's so good to have him back to, to hear his beautiful voice and, and know his love for you. Lord, this has, this has been a very difficult week. Um, not only did we lose our, our dear friend Ken, but also I'd like to thank all of the, the members here for praying for Jack Gardner, who also passed on Friday. So um, he's in the hands of God. And we thank God so much for taking our loved ones and and knowing that they are in peace and joy in heaven with you, Lord. Thank you for giving me such a fabulous community that has, has taken time from their days to, to praise you and also to think of others and send prayers on their behalf. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful conversation. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you that you brought us here this morning to worship you. A God that pours out blessing upon blessing. Each and every day, you fulfill everything we need in this life and the life to come. Nothing is by chance for you. It's all planned out perfectly according to your will. Father, we are going through some times of sickness and death and Rudy German, who's in the hospital right now with COVID, he's asked us to pray for him. And Father, he's asked you for your love upon him. I don't know where he stands with you, but he doesn't know you totally. Bring somebody in his life that the gospel can be shared. I also pray for Liz that her son has been missing for over a week. That that child may come back home and they can rejoice. And they can give you praise. I want to thank you for all the great things that you do for us. This food pantry. And how you provide all the things to help all these different people. To how we've been able to share the good news with others. And watch them turn their lives to you and to 
praise you. So everything is all about you. So help us this morning that our eyes would stay in heaven upon the beauty of you and all the great things that you, your son, did for us that we could not do for ourselves. Accept our worship in your presence this morning. And it's in your son's name. Lord God Almighty, we bow ourselves before you in submission. We confess that you are mighty. You are sovereign over the, over the actions of men and of angels and for all creation. We ask that you would give us guidance and encouragement by that fact. And that in submission to you, we would find true joy as we submit ourselves and glorify your name, Lord. God, I ask that you would strengthen us in this position. Strengthen us to know your love, the way you care for us. Lord, I pray specifically for the eight mothers who killed their children this week you would use this heinous action to to show them the depravity of their souls and their desperate need for you Lord and I pray that you would end this practice drive wickedness far from us Lord Lord, we lift up our pastor to you. We are so grateful for Trevor. Um, this is a faithful man who raised himself from his sick bed on Saturday morning so he could be down at the abortion clinic. And, um, did not feel up to it. Probably shouldn't have been there. And yet, there he was, Lord, wanting to be faithful to you and to the people of the congregation. We thank you, Lord, for Melissa, for all that she brings, for her medical expertise and just for the joyful spirit that she has the love of the word and the love of jesus and we thank you lord for these two little ones that now reside in your house and we pray lord your healing touch upon them but even more so lord we pray that you would touch them by the power of your holy spirit to help them know how loved they are and how cared for and how much we love them lord uh, come we pray and uh, work among us there's so many needs that we have and you're the only one who's able to think and to know them all and to do exactly what's right. Come and be our Savior because apart from you, we have nothing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Would you stand with me again as we respond to God's goodness in song? Oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus that he has for his sins. Let's sing.
Let's give the Lord praise. Let's sing the doxology together. chapter 4, verses 9 through 12. Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, uh, verses 9 through 12. Here now... Hear now the wisdom from the Lord. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone when he falls and has not another to lift him up. Again, if two lie together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? And though a man might prevail against one who is alone, two will withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of it. Do we have any children this morning for a children's message? I have cheese it. <laughs> oh, okay. So you guys know what you can eat and what you can. Hello. Trevor is so much better at this than I am, but uh, I brought along a few things to occupy you. Um, first of all, I don't know if you noticed, but I have leprosy on my hand. Do you see that? That's not really leprosy, though, is it? Huh? No. Well, that is great stuff. <laughs> you ever had great stuff? Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> This is great for filling in cracks and things like that, and it expands, it's expandable foam, you know, but it's not so great stuff if you get it on your hands, and that's what I was doing when Trevor called me at 6 p.m. last night, so <laughs> that's what I was doing. So that's great stuff. It's good for filling stuff up, okay? Uh, how about this? We, we'll take that away from the communion so it won't get confused. Um, how about this? What's this? Anybody know what that is? Huh? Got a little elastic in it and stuff like that. Anybody know what that is? It's not a nose warmer. It's scrunchy. Right? Is it still over here? No. Put it for a jar. Put it for a jar or a microphone. Huh? It was on my microphone. Is that right? Yeah. See, no, I thought it was for somebody's good. What did I know? Well, oh, girls put it over here. See, that's what I was thinking, Junior, but obviously it's filled with a microphone instead. Why do we put a microphone over this? Or there's a microphone? Don't know? Protect it? In some way? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, anyway, there's another thing you fill up. It's empty right now, right? Um, how do you feel your tummy? Huh? I've been living off of cheese since last night. <laughs> and, uh, are you allowed to have some cheese? Are you? Are the fish? Are the? Okay, yeah. Can you grab it? Careful, they all 
Is your tummy getting full from the Cheez-Its? Yep. You want some more? Yep, your tummy's empty. Okay. So we're filling up our tummy. That's really, really cool. We're going to talk about filling up something today, and that's why I did all of this. Don't get too sad. I am closing it up. And the reason for that is I want to talk about something a little bit deeper or um, more important than filling our tummies or filling our scrunchies with our microphones or filling up cracks, okay? How do we fill up our heart? Hmm. Or we could say, how do we fill up our life? Now there's gotta be a Sunday school answer to this, right? It's the same answer for everything. When everybody, what? No, not school, but if you're in Sunday school and they ask you a question, as long as you answer this answer, then you'll be right about 90% of the time. What's that represent for us? The cross. And was anybody on that or is it just empty? Jesus, right? So we fill up our lives with Jesus. And that's how we fill up our lives. As a matter of fact, our lives aren't really worth anything apart from Jesus. Because if Jesus didn't really die and rise from the dead and isn't going to take us home later on if we believe in him, then what's going to happen to us? We would just die and dissolve and then we'll be gone and nobody will remember us at all. Is that what you want to be your future? No, no. Now there's one other thing that we need to fill up our hearts. Can you guess what that other thing might be? We're going to talk about it in the sermon. Love. Love from whom? From whom? Well, Jesus is love, but we maybe need a little bit more love than that. Our parents would be great. They're very, very good. Love from your parents. And how about you adults? Love from whom? Fellow man. Your fellow man. Okay, right. Your fellow man. And especially your fellow man who happened to be going to the same place as you eternally, right? Friends. People in your church. We call this fellowship. We call it communion, and we'll be actually celebrating not just communion with Jesus, but communion with one another in a few minutes, right? And you're going to be surprised, because I kind of was, that I thought Jesus was the only answer, in a way, of filling up life, that I really found out something that Paul is going to teach us in Romans chapter 16. And if you want to get out your Bibles and turn there, that would be a good time to do that. But Romans chapter 16 about how it is that we also need fellow friends in Jesus Christ, okay? So, you got that little lesson and your tummy's full? You guys can go back, all right? Thank you very much for coming up, that was wonderful. At least for me, I got more cheese. take your Bibles and turn to Romans 16. This was what Trevor was going to preach on, and he allowed me to go ahead and take part of the passage. He was going to do the whole thing. And uh, I said, could I just take verses 3 to 16? So as you know, Trevor's been pre preaching through the book of Romans, and I'm leaving him all the hard stuff, uh, which is great, because he's going to talk to you about Phoebe and deaconesses and things like that. And then he'll also deal with the great, great, great final words of Paul to the Romans. And in Romans uh, chapter 3 is where we're going to begin. And you're going to see a whole list of names here. And you're going to wonder why in the world are we reading this? It's sort of like those genealogies in the Old Testament. You know, what is it that we could possibly get out of this? Who are these people? Why do we care? Um, and I'm terrible at names. I just want you to know that and reading them in the Bible. So if you're terrible, anybody else can read the Bible and kind of have difficulty with names? Um, then if I misspeak, uh, go ahead and correct me. That's fine. It's no problem. 
And I understand uh, that it's usually the custom to stand if you're able uh, to hear God's word. So let's go ahead and stand if you're able in Romans chapter 16, verse 3. I printed mine out in big print, so anybody else have that? <laughs> Greet Prisca and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus, who risked their necks for my life, to whom not only I give thanks, but all of the churches of the Gentiles give thanks as well. Greet also the church in their house. Greet my fellow beloved Epe. Epinitus, Epinitus, did I say that right? Epinitus. Epinitus, oh, that's so much better. What is it? Epinitus. Epinitus, very good. Who was the first convert to Christ in Asia. Wow, that's pretty cool, okay. Greet Mary, who has worked hard for you. Greet Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen, which means that they would be Jews um, as opposed to Gentiles, and my fellow prisoners, so they must have shared a cell with Paul at some point. They are well known to the apostles, and they were in Christ before me, so they became believers even before Paul. Greet Amphilitus, my beloved in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our fellow worker in Christ, and my beloved Stachus. Sound okay? Stachus? Any guesses? Okay. Greet Apelles who is approved in Christ. Greet those who belong to the family of Aristobulus. Greet my kinsman Herodian. Greet those in the Lord who belong to the family of Narcissus. Um, what's a narcissist, anybody know? Yeah, the person who thinks about themselves all the time and stuff. So it's kind of interesting. Some of these names are very, very kind of Greek and have mythology behind them and all that. Here they are believers. Greet those workers in the Lord, and these happen to be two sisters, by the way. You know how sometimes uh, parents will name sisters with kind of a similar sounding thing? Uh, Tryphenia and Tryphosa. Greet the beloved Persis, that is also a woman's name, who has worked hard in the Lord. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, also his mother, who has been a mother to me as well. Greet let me see if I can get some of these. A syncretitis, Philagon, Philagon, Hermes, that's like the god, um, messenger god from Greece, Petrobos, Hermas, which is kind of another form of Hermes, and the brothers who are with them. Greet Phil, Philo, Logos, Julia, Nerusus, Isis, Isis, what would you say? Nereus. Nereus. Oh, that's so much better. And his sister. And how about this one? We should all we should get this. Olympus. Okay. Or Olympus. And all the saints who are with them. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ greet you. Okay. Lord, we pray for your blessing upon 